message. If, if you're going to get your mind right, you've got to abort anxiety. Mm. Wow, you're preaching today, man. Rejoice in the Lord. Stay right there for a minute. Always. And again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness, gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Verse 6, do not worry yep. about yep. anything. Yes, sir. I see it right there. That's what you came to church for today. Do not worry about anything. Now, the problem with that anything is that anything could be anything. So if the doctor says it's cancer, anything. If you wake up and there's a note laying on the pillow where he used to lay, saying, I've tried but I can't do this no more. The text is very clear. Do not worry about anything. But I'm supposed to get evicted on the first. And I just ain't got it, Pastor Free. Don't worry about it. No, but they're scandalizing my name. They're lying on me, trying to make me look bad so that I lose my job. People stop supporting my Oh, what? I knew you'd get quiet right here. That's why I came to preach through it. Don't worry yeah. about anything. This ain't where you turn to your neighbor. This is where you talk to yourself and say, Shout! Yeah. Don't worry. Yeah. Yeah. 2017 was a booger. Yeah. Yeah. And some of you are concerned yeah. that the troubles of last year. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah will continue into this year. Now it's possible that the troubles will remain. Yeah. But you got an opportunity yeah. to abort the anxiety that made the trouble unbearable and to say even if it gets hard, I reserved in my mind. Don't worry. If they walk away from you, yeah, man. don't worry. If you've told them your secrets yeah, yeah. and now they're turning their backs and using them against Come you, don't worry. don't worry. If they're laying off on your job yeah. and you know last hired, first fired, God told me to tell you. Don't worry. Why? Because he has already figured out the not yet in the right now. Yeah. I know you missed it because you didn't shout. Here it is. The reality is there are some things that we are worried about how it's going to turn out. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. Let me mess you up. God in his providence already knows how the story ends. So while you're stressing, he's just watching it play out. Y'all remember uh, the women going to the tomb on Easter morning? What was the question they asked? Who? will roll the stone away. Uh -huh. What they did not realize is that the stone they were stressing had already been addressed. Y'all are quiet in here. And I wish I had nine folk in the room that are real enough to testify that you stressed over some stones that had already been moved away. Is there anybody that said you didn't know how you were going to pay the bill? Huh? And at the last minute, huh, money came from nowhere. Huh? But can I tell you that the money was on the way huh? before you ever got down on your knees to pray? Huh? Somebody ought to say, I love the Lord. Huh? Cause he heard my cry. Huh? And he pitied every groan. Huh? But the thing I love about God huh, is he heard your cry huh, before you ever cried it. Huh? I ain't got no trumpet here. He heard huh, your cry huh, before you ever cried it. Huh? I said it ain't good grandma, huh, but it feel good to me. Huh? Is there anybody here huh, that said before I had sense to pray, huh, before I opened the scripture, huh, before pastor gave me a word, huh, God huh, knew what I was on my way into. Huh,
If I'm going to get my mind right, Jason, I've got to understand that God doesn't give me permission to pout about anything. But he gives me a commandment to praise about everything. But in everything, give. No, see, now look. I was with you, Pastor. But I got some stuff that I ain't trying to be thankful for. Now, I'll endure it. I'll try to keep trusting. But this don't feel like something to be thankful Anybody real enough in the room to say you lived through some stuff that you it just didn't seem like thankful stuff? Yeah. Yeah. Now I see y'all jumping and shouting and howling and all that's good, but you shouting over here. It's hard for me to shout over diagnosis. Come on, somebody talk back to me. You, you shout because you just got married. It's hard to shout when you just found out he was messing with your sister. It's, come on, somebody talk back to me. You, you shouting because you've been delivered from addiction, but it's hard to be thankful when that crack pipe is still calling me, when the streets are still calling me, when the supplier keeps dropping by my God, you telling me to be thankful in some stuff. When I got pain going through my body and the doctor don't know what's wrong with me, you telling me? You said in everything, ah, be thankful. I, I, I've learned that far too many Christians are POWs. That, that, that word POW for most of us is a prisoner of war. But far too many Christians are prisoners of word. Uh -huh. That you can't have joy, you can't have peace. Sunday after Sunday, we having a shouting good time, and you sitting there looking like we've been dipped in pickle juice. Because you find it hard to be thankful. But here it is. Listen, if you want to get your mind right, you've got to understand that worry is not an option for the people of God. No matter what we face, we've got to choose to think positively, to trust in God, and to win. And no matter what it is, if I trust God, I can be thankful. Here it is. And the third thing, you can pray persistently. If your mind going to be right, you've got to have an active prayer life. Too many Christians want to be blessed and don't want to pray. No. If I were to ask you right now, how many of you have prayed today? You'd be like, well, we prayed earlier. <laughs> if I were to ask you, how many of you pray every day? Uh -huh. I pray over my food. Mm. Y'all quiet. Yeah, yeah. The reality is the church is weak because it's full of people who praise and don't pray. And that old adage is true, much prayer, much power. Little prayer, little power. No prayer. Uh-huh, and we got a whole lot of Christians in the church who you shout like a giant. But you, you pray like a midget. I ain't got no help in here. And so when the devil comes to wreak havoc in your life, your mind ain't right. You're easily overtaken. Your marriage falls apart. You go to the job and cuss everybody at Samsung out because you have not been persistently praying. And now you are. Yo, you see how quiet you are right now? That's because I'm on your toe. Right. <laughs> Pray more. Pray better this year. If you want your mind to be right, you got to spend more time on your knees. Do you know that the best way to fight is on your knees? Yes. Have got a witness in here. Now, I was uh, at my brother's house this week, and we had our boys. He has three sons. I have three sons. And uh, they were tearing up the house, but it was his house, so I wasn't tripping. <laughs> we were in Waco, Texas. And uh, it, it messed me up because when boys don't have an opportunity to play, they create one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So here they are in a living room. 
uh, maybe the dimensions of the inside of the stage, and they decide they're going to play tackle football. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. <laughs> my, 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 my brother, John Rector, has a son who's about three years old. Little JoJo, he's the shortest, but he's probably the toughest. And they're playing this game with JoJo that they're going to run the ball to the end zone and he has to try to stop them. <laughs> this is the game. Now, my youngest son is eight. So they're eight, they're nine, 11, 12, and they're running against a three-year-old. <laughs> but they tried to make the game even because they were playing on their knees. Now here it is, you got a three-year-old boy who's supposed to stop them and they're running to the end zone, but they've tried to make it easy because now they're on their knees. They're running to the end zone. They're trying to get there. And little Jojo is grabbing them and trying to throw them down. And in my mind, they said, it's even now because I'm down on his level. But in the spirit, I heard God say, there are some of us that the devil's been trying to kill us because he thinks that we're down on this level. But what he does not understand is that when I'm on my knees, I'm even stronger than when I am on my feet. I need about seven so get here and say, I, I believe I'll just play on the knees. I'll live on my knees. I'll walk on my knees. He says, in everything with pride, i sit down, and supplication, If my mind's going to be right, right. Brother Finner, I've got to think faithful. Right. I've got to abort anxiety. I've got to pray persistently when I feel like it and when I don't. Right. Sometimes you need to roll your happy self out the bed yeah. 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 and get down. Yeah. Yeah. You want them folk at the school to think you're really crazy? Uh -huh. Don't go in there with that house coat and them flip-flops cussing out the principal. <laughs> Walk in the office and get down on your knees. <laughs> I came to intercede not only for my baby, but for the rest of these children. that are walking up and down these hours. I had nine people over here that put their back because if I tell God about it, God I sure wish I had a voice. Luke 18 and 1 says Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not faint. If you don't get anything else from this sermon today, if you're going to get your mind right, you need to pray and then pray some more. And when you get up from praying, keep on praying. Tap your neighbor, say, neighbor, how good is your prayer life? Because that's what's going to determine how good the rest of your life really is. Even MC Hammer had it right. He said you got to pray just to make it today. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, do I have anybody here that says if I'm going to be better for the king in 2018, I got to pray and pray right. Pray for my friends. Pray for my enemies. Pray for my children. Pray for my parents. Pray for the pastor. Pray for the deacons. Pray for my husband. Pray for my wife. I need five folk in a room right now that are committed to have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about your troubles. He will hear your faintest cry. And he will answer by and die. Is there anybody here that will declare just the talk with Jesus makes it all right? Can you wave your hand at me if you know that prayer changes things? Don't see me now. Do you know that God will answer your prayer? Do you know that God Hallelujah. Listen, I'm done.